Hello, my name is Sister Ethel Marie Sonnier. I was born in 1935, the sixth of nine children in a small farming community called Church Point, Louisiana. Life was hard at the time, raising nine children. This was particularly so during World War II, but we were a closely knit family. Our faith was nourished by the Eucharist and by the family rosary and dedication of our family to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. A special framed prayer was used for this. The practice was continued for many years when some of us went home for vacation. There were advantages to being a large family. The older ones helped the younger ones. Each of us had to carry our load with the farm work. When we were about six years old, Mama made us a small sack to pick our cotton. They started us out for short periods. When I was in eighth grade, one of the sisters gave a vocation talk. She gave us a vocation prayer with a picture of a young girl, like the one you might see in our guest rooms if you visited our monastery. When I got home, I showed the card to my family. My dad looked at it, and with a twinkle in his eyes, he said, Hmm, she's too pretty to become a nun. I remembered saying, Oh, Daddy, meaning girls entering the convent should not be so pretty? We laughed together. I also remember thinking, I don't need to say that prayer because I know I already that I will become a nun. As far back as I can remember, I could hear my mother tell distant cousins and friends when they visited that I was going to become a nun. I grew up with this idea, so when the time came, in those days communities accepted girls right out of eighth grade, I entered a community in New Orleans, Louisiana. It was called the Congregation of the Immaculate Conception. After completing my postulancy and novitiate, I made my first vows in 1952. And in 1956, I made my final vows. After my four years at the Dominican College in New Orleans, I was sent to teach in Destrehan, Louisiana. In 1960, when the community had to withdraw from that school, I was sent to our other high school in Lockport, Louisiana. I continued to work there, but in a different ministry. I visited the homebound, whom I loved greatly, once when I took a group of my fifth graders to visit a nursing home and acted so warmly towards the residents, I was told by one of the children that I had missed my vocation, meaning I should be in that ministry. Another aspect of my ministry was to help teachers who instructed the children attending public school. In 1966, I was appointed mistress of novices. Very few women were entering the order and most did not stay it. After a few more years, I felt called to try to enter another religious community. After a year for observation, the sisters voted to accept me and a companion sister from the same order. The Benedictine Sisters of St. Scholastica in Fort Smith received us warmly and made us feel at home. In my new community, since I had been trained to teach, I was missioned to the one Catholic school in the area. I taught French, English, and religion, but before this happened, I had a challenge to face regarding my college credits from Louisiana to Arkansas. Arkansas required more PE credits than Louisiana did. I would like to share a little anecdote in this regard. I checked with what was at that time a community college in Fort Smith to see if I could enroll in any of the courses there. The only thing available was a course in football. Well, I knew nothing about the sport, but I needed the credit. So off I went to learn the game. I dutifully listened to the lectures, and some of the guys helped me. I suppose it was weird to have a nun enrolled in that class. There were X's mapped out as plays. We were shown films, the old real fashion. It showed some strategic plays. I went through the whole class befuddled, but fortunately, I memorized enough to get by. To my surprise, I made an A in the course. I've enjoyed many a laugh with those who have heard my story. At the end of the school year, new assignments had to be made since the high school was closing. 
I was sent to St. Gabriel's in Kansas City, Missouri. A part of my ministry was to work with the people who taught religion. After two years there, I was given the option to return to Louisiana and do the same kind of work I had been doing and also to teach religion to all levels of grade school. By that time I had learned to play the guitar. I used that gift to prepare the children for school masses. I found it very rewarding. Another very fulfilling part of the ministry was my involvement in clowning. I did some religious miming of those scripts, some scriptures and did some prayer services. You may ask, how does a nun become involved in clowning? This was common in the 1960s and 70s. Here's how it happened with me. When I taught religion in Louisiana, I received an invitation from the diocesan office to attend a clowning workshop being conducted by a group of sisters. I had in mind to pass the information to those teaching religion to teens. They might be interested. Instead, I felt the Holy Spirit inviting me to make the workshop. What? Me? I was shy and sedate. That's why I needed to do this. I had to learn to let my inner child out, and when I did, I received healing. Fitted with my new garb and painted face, I decided to be a silent clown and go out incognito. I went on the playground and joined in the children's games. Since I was silent, I watched this dynamic take place. One of them quickly emerged as a leader and led the game. One little girl came near me and put her arms around my legs and hugged them and said, You're my daddy. I was puzzled by that until I found out that her father worked offshore and would be gone to a foreign country for a whole month at a time. Later, some of the children let me know they had recognized me as, as a clown. I asked them how they knew. They said, Sister, you laughed. The universal language had found me out. That one simple workshop on clowning led me to many years of adventure as I released my clown for the kingdom of God with God at the helm. It has been exciting to wait and see how God opens doors for me to be his clown. I was able to teach the children some of my original religious songs. They are simple and singable. My next field of ministry, begun in 1985, was being a core member of Hezekiah House of Prayer in New Blaine, Arkansas. It is a retreat place with four hermitages where people can experience silence and solitude. There I was privileged to share the retreat and spiritual journeys. It was an opportunity for me to grow also. That's why when they praised me for helping them, I could remind them, as I often did, that it worked both ways. I was touched at how their fate sustained them through all kinds of crises. Those 27 years at our retreat place were some of the happiest and most fulfilling times in my life. Last August 2013, after recovering from a broken wrist, I was assigned as a resident in our monastery infirmary in Fort Smith. In a transition right, my community welcomed me home. This would be my first mission. Our prioress told the community that I was to be a prayerful support and presence to the sisters and the staff, and she added, you can do some clowning. I am delighted to see how the Holy Spirit is inspiring me once more in this new chapter of my clowning. This prayer was part of the rite of transition. May you be open to the change that is happening and let yourself be guided by my Holy Spirit. And may you risk the unknown and live daily with my mystery. I made my profession in 1952 in New Orleans. In 2012, I celebrated a 60th jubilee, which is counted from the first profession. To anyone seeking to know whether they have a religious vocation, I say, God is full of surprises and wants to send you the Holy Spirit to speak to you. I'm still glad six, six years later that I said yes.
to his leadings. I pray you too will seek to know his will for you.